Zelensky says Ukraine controls over 1,250 square kilometers in Russia's Kursk region. Russian authorities are still struggling to put out a fire at an oil depot caused by a Ukrainian drone strike. The search for six missing people, including UK tech billionaire Mike Lynch, continues after a yacht sunk off the coast of Sicily in bad weather. US Vice President Kamala Harris made a surprise appearance at the Democratic Convention, which kicked off on Monday in Chicago. Ukraine controls over 1,250 square kilometers in Russia's Kursk region. That is according to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. He adds that troops captured the largest number of Russian prisoners in a single operation, making it one of Kiev's largest efforts to liberate Ukrainians from Russian captivity. Eighty-four temporary accommodation centers opened in the Kursk region, as Russian authorities say more than 121,000 civilians were evacuated since the start of the incursion. On Sunday, the Ukrainian president addressed the aim of the incursion into Kursk for the first time, which is to create a buffer zone to prevent further attacks by Moscow across the border. Zelensky says his troops would not have to physically enter Russian territories, particularly the Kursk region, if Ukraine partners would lift the restriction on the use of long-range weapons. Russian authorities are still struggling to put out a fire at an oil depot which was hit by Ukrainian drones three days ago. According to Russian state news agencies, the fire has burned across an area of 10,000 square metres in the town of Proletarsk in the Rostov region of Russia. Reports say there are 500 firefighters attempting to tackle the flames, of which at least 41 have been taken to hospital. Взорвалась бочка. А я не слышала. На вот же глянь. Вот это уже плохо. Вот это уже плохо. Ukraine's army general staff has claimed responsibility for attacking the oil depot, which was used to supply the needs of Russia's army. It comes as Russia continues to grapple with Ukraine's incursion into the Kursk region. New satellite photos appear to show Russian forces building temporary bridges to replace those blown up by Ukrainian troops. The Russian Ministry of Defense has also released footage of what it says shows bodies of soldiers and damaged Ukrainian military vehicles on a road in Kursk. Elsewhere, Russia says it's destroyed a Ukrainian ammunition and weaponry depot in the Sumy region and a Ukrainian M777 howitzer in Kharkiv. The search for six missing people continued after a yacht sunk off the coast of Sicily with at least one confirmed dead. Fifteen people survived, including a mother who reported holding her one-year-old baby over the waves to save her. Rescue teams and divers return to the site of the storm-sunken superyacht. The missing people are believed to be trapped in the ship's hull, 50 meters underwater. Divers were reportedly unable to access the ship's cabins as they were blocked by debris that had shifted during a violent storm that toppled the luxury sailboat early Monday. One body has been recovered, officials said. Passengers on board included UK tech billionaire Mike Lynch and his family. The vacation appeared to be something of a celebration after Lynch's acquittal in a fraud case, with guests including some of the people who had stood by him throughout the ordeal. The yacht had been moored about a half mile off the coast when a storm rolled in around 4 a.m. Monday morning. Officials said they believed the ship was struck by a tornado over the water which had passed over the area.
U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris made a surprise appearance at the Democratic Convention in Chicago to pay a tribute to U.S. President Joe Biden. This is going to be a great week. And I want to kick us off by celebrating our incredible president, Joe Biden. Joe, thank you for your historic leadership, for your lifetime of service to our nation, and for all you will continue to do. We are forever grateful to you. Four weeks ago, Biden stepped aside as the party's presidential nominee to make way for his running mate, Kamala Harris. The convention holds particularly high stakes for the party as it will showcase the new presidential nominee's policy objectives. Hillary Clinton also made an appearance at the convention. The former Secretary of State applauded Harris for working towards breaking what she calls the highest and hardest glass ceiling. Also on the opening day of the DNC, Thousands of marchers took to the streets in a mostly peaceful protest calling for an end to the war in Gaza. Several demonstrators were arrested after breaking through a fence set up by the police. U.S. President Joe Biden delivered his valedictory address to the Democratic National Convention, telling the audience he gave them his best and basking in a long ovation. Biden told the crowd that when Trump left office, NATO was in tatters and America's public image completely different. When Trump left office, Europe and NATO was in tatters. Not a joke. America first doctrine changed our whole image in the world. But I spent, they gave the hours, about 190 hours, some total, even my counterparts who heads of state in Europe to strengthen NATO. We did. We united Europe like it hadn't been united for years. Biden defended his record as president, advocated for his vice president in the upcoming election, and went on the attack against Trump. Just as no commander in chief should ever bow down to a dictator, the way Trump bows down to Putin. I never have, and I promise you, Kamala Harris will never do it. We'll never bow down. President Biden described his selection of Kamala Harris as his running mate four years ago, the best decision he made in his whole career. He insisted he did not harbor any ill will about the impending end of his tenure and called on the party to unite around Harris. Massive growth in the population of Ireland between 2015 and 2023 has seen demand for housing reach a ratio of now just under four to one. That means for every four persons seeking a house, only one is available. The massive demand for housing is resulting in a huge increase in property prices, which is now beyond the reach of most young people. Some observers say the government is failing badly to address the needs of people who are trying to get on the property ladder. We failed to uh, stem that flow and failed to build appropriate social homes to allow them the dignity of being able to be housed. So we have a massive crisis here at the moment that is increasing year upon year and a massive supply and demand that doesn't mix, doesn't connect and is completely disconnected and at odds with what our needs are. Central to the massive demand for housing is the rapid rise in the population. The numbers in the country have risen from 3.6 million in the mid-1990s to a current figure of 5.1 million. However, in that time, the number of housing completions has fallen behind demand. A recent study found that Ireland has a higher house demand ratio than Spain, the United Kingdom, Germany and the USA. The demand per capita is twice that of Australia, which is a popular destination for immigrants from all over the world. The Irish government say that despite the current figures, the rate of housing completions is improving. For 10 years, up to 2020, not enough homes are being built. But if I look at what we're doing now, uh, that in the first two years of housing for all, we significantly exceeded our targets. Um, we will do so again this year uh, by delivering private, really good social housing, social housing at a rate that we haven't seen for over 50 years, and affordable homes for working people for the first time in a generation. The real problem for the Irish government is that as its economy continues to boom, Ireland will remain an attractive location for immigrants whose demand for housing will continue to surpass supply. 
This four to one ratio of demand and supply of houses in this country is putting pressure on the government to increase property completions. With a general election coming down the line in the coming months, housing could be the issue that determines who forms the next government in this country. This is Ken Murray for Euronews in Dublin. A German court has rejected an appeal by a 99-year-old woman who was convicted of being an accessory to more than 10,000 murders during World War II. Umgard Feuchner was indicted in December 2022 for her role as a secretary to the SS commander of the Nazis Stutthof concentration camp. The Itzehoe court said the judges were convinced the former stenographer had a role in the deaths of thousands of prisoners killed by gassings, concentration camps and death marches. Stargazers and photographers gather across the globe to catch a glimpse of the rare blue supermoon. A supermoon is used to describe when the full moon is at its closest point to Earth. Because of this close proximity, the moon appears to be 14% larger and 30% brighter compared to when it's at its farthest distance. The lunar spectacle is especially rare as according to NASA it is also a blue moon which happens every two to three years. Worried that you missed it? Well according to NASA the blue supermoon can be seen through early Wednesday morning. August supermoon is the first of four lunar spectacles. The next supermoon will be on the night of September 18th, followed by October 17th, and the final supermoon will round out the year on November 15th. <laughs>